My name is Sambali Rasa Kolabaji. I will be your physics teacher for today's lesson. Topic, physics practical. Objective, at the end of the session, Lana will be able to analyze a set of physics experiments with respect to one, physics practical examination, recording readings in a table, plotting of graphs, classwork exercise, and assignment. Tip for practical physics examination. Read the instruction carefully. Make sure you know exactly what you are asked to do each time. You virtually do not have any time to waste, so you need to be sure you are doing the right thing first time. Write down all your readings clearly in the answer booklet. Whenever you are asked to take a single reading, make sure you include the unit. Ensure you do not write anything you are not asked for. You are not expected to write an account of the experiment. If you are asked to use your result to obtain something, then quote them, not just use the theory you know. Think about the experiment as you do it. Most often, you are asked, to, you are asked for source of error or difficulties. Significant figures are important in the practical paper. Do not quote too many or too few. Number nine. If you are reading a measuring instrument, give all the values, e.g., on a hundredth of a second stopwatch. Write 9.24 seconds, but not 09.24 seconds. Many maths are lost by giving too few significant figures. This usually occurs when reading a scale where the value is on a major mark e.g. 6 volt. If the scale measures to 0.1 volt, then the reading is 6.0 volt, and you must include the point zero. In calculated values, you should give the same number of significant figure as in the value used, e.g. the average of 27.95, 26.54, and 27.36 is 27.283333 and should be given as 27.28. Make sure you understand the technical term used in the question. E.g., extension means the increase in length of a spring when a load is, ad is added. Record your readings in a table. A. Write both the quantity and unit in the heading. Note that the quantity means current, not reading on the ammeter. Please do not write unit after every reading in the table. This just cluster up the table and make it difficult to see the value clearly. A heading should say current ampere or just I slash A. B. You do not need a column label reading number, which just goes 1, 2, 3, etc. If you are given a table outline in which to record your result, this will use one of them, and you will not have enough color for your work. C. Make sure you have taken sufficient reading, e.g., if you are asked to measure a temperature of a cooling liquid for 5 minutes, then a reading every minute give you few reading. Every 30 seconds is acceptable. D. Make sure you record the temperature for the full time. Do not forget, don't forget to note the initial temperature when you start stopwatch. If you are using a liquid in glass thermometer, you should be able to establish within a degree, e.g. to 0.5 degrees Celsius or 0.25 degrees Celsius. We are going to stop here and go for a break. Thank you. Welcome back. Tips for plotting graphs. When drawing graph, you should 1. Remember to label the axis with both quantity, e.g. distance or D, and unit meter or M, then write it as DM. Make sure the axis are the correct way around. You are usually told to you are usually told for example to plot 
distance on the x-axis so make sure you know that x is the horizontal axis three make the scale up adequately well on the graph sheet such as 0, 0,5, 10 or 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on I will repeat make the scale go up adequately well on the graph sheet such as 0, 0,5, 10 or 2, 4, 6, 8 etc etc 4 never use odd scale such as 3, 6, 9 or 7, 14 etc 5. Make sure that the plotted point fill at least half the graph paper. That is, you cannot double the scale and still plot all the points on the graph. 6. Check if you have been told to start the scale from the origin. If not, then think carefully about where to start the axis. 7. Use a sharp pencil to plot the points and to draw the line. 8. Plot the point carefully. It is best to use small neat crosses. Every point will be checked by the marker and you will lose the mark if you are if any are wrongly plotted. 9. Draw either a straight line and or a smooth curve. In physics, we never joint the dots. 10. Remember that a best fit line, curve or straight, should have some point both above and below the line, e.g. in a table having five data to be plotted. At least three must be on the best fit line to attract marks. When taking reading from the graph, you should 1. Draw a large triangle when measuring the gradient of a line. It must be at, it must be at least half the length of the line. 2. Always use point on a line, not your plotted point, when calculating the gradient. 3. Make sure you read the scale correctly when reading a value from a graph. It may be that, it may be that they are in milliampere rather than I or kilometer rather than M. 4. Draw a tangent to fit the gradient of a curve. Make sure it is at right angle on the curve. Always use a large triangle. Work example. I will use past question, question 3, 2006, November, December, DC. Look at the diagram on the board. A side which is connected as shown in the diagram above. With the key closed, the real start is adjusted such that a small current passes in the circuit. The current I in the circuit is measured and recorded. Also, the potential difference V across the two ohms resistor is measured and recorded. The procedure is repeated four more times by adjusting the real start each time to obtain higher value of the current and the potential difference. Figure 1A show the value of the current I, while figure 1B show the corresponding value of the potential difference VI, where I represent 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 respectively. We'll be going on break. After the break, we continue. Thank you. You are welcome back to the final segment of the lesson. I will start from the instruction. Number one, read and record the value of current I. Number two, evaluate current inverse in each case. Number three, also read and record the corresponding value of the potential difference V. Number four, evaluate V inverse in each case. Five, tabulate your reading. Six, plot the graph of V inverse on the vertical axis against I inverse on the horizontal axis, starting both axes from the origin. 7. Evaluate K is equal to slope inverse. Number 8. State two precautions you will take to ensure accurate result if you are performing this experiment in the laboratory. B. Aspect. B1. 
A constant wire has a cross sectional area of 4 times 10 raised to negative 8 meter square and resistivity 1.1 times 10 raised to negative 6 ohms meter. Its resistor is 11 ohm. If, if resistor 11 ohm is to be made from this wire, calculate the length of the wi wire required. B2, it says supply a current of 0 0.6 ampere and 0 0.2 ampere through 1 ohms and 4 ohms resistor respectively. Calculate the internal resistance of the cell. Solution. Look through the table. You have four columns. One column is for current. The other one is for voltage. The third one is for current inverse. And the fourth one is for voltage inverse. Explanation of the table. I repeat, explanation of the table. Column 1 and 2 are obtained by reading the value of current and potential difference in figure 1A and figure 1B respectively. Column 3 and 4 are obtained by calculating the reciprocal value of column 1 and 2 respectively. Look at the graph on the screen. Slope. Slope, it gives us a value y2 minus y1 all over s2 minus s1 which give us 4.95 minus 0 0.5 all over 10 minus 9.0 and that gives us a slope of 0 0.494 ohms k inverse of slope will be 1 all over 0 0.494 which give us a value of k score to 2.02 ohms precautions here, I will assume the above experiment was performed by any one of you in your school laboratory. Hence, the precaution must be in the past tense, since it is asking you what you have done to ensure accurate readings. 1. I remove the plug key when readings are not being taken to avoid running down of the battery. 2. I ensure clean terminals and tight connection. 3. Zero error in ammeter and voltmeters were corrected. B1. Restivity it gives us S L over A. We are our rep represent resistance S restivity right and cross sectional area and then L length of the wire. If you make out the subject of the formula, you have R is equal to S L all over A. We are L will give us R A over X. And then going through the calculation and putting the value inside, we obtain a value of 40 times 10 raised to negative 2, which gives us 0 0.4 meter. B2. E is equal to current into bracket big R plus small r, that is external resistor plus internal resistance. So that gives us 0 0.6 into bracket 1 plus r, which gives us 0 0.2 into bracket 4 plus r. Rearranging the whole equation, we obtain R is equal to 0 0.2 over 0 0.4, which gives us 0 0.5 ohms. Assignment. Use the table to plot the graph of R ohms against theta in degree. Thank you very much.